Good morning. God is good and the sun is shining. We actually had sun out more than once this week. I don't know if that excites any of you. They say when the sun does not shine much that our moods change. Some people it does not affect because their mood's always the same. But there are people that the sun affects. And there's always great um, irony in using the word sun because that's S-U-N. So I always heard my pastor when I was younger say, but we all need the S-O-N to shine in our hearts as well, don't we? And to do that, sometimes we have to show what we're made of. There are times when I show what I'm made of, Dave, and I don't like what I see. And then there are times when something goes right, and I all of a sudden want to be proud of myself, and something checks me, Jim, real quick, and says, you don't have anything to crow about, little rooster. That's me inside of you. Amen? And so Jesus shows us here. We're talking about something that we're going to get into even deeper throughout next month. Next month, we're going to tackle uh, some things that we deal with as Christians in the world that's around us. Sometimes you feel like you're walking through a landmine, and every other day you got something different that pops up, and you got to learn how to get through that. Some of you have had some weeks, I know, where it's been physical uh, problems and this and that and sickness and uh, maybe even jobs or maybe certain things. We, uh, we are having a pretty decent week, I'd like to think, wouldn't you, Cheryl, maybe at some point, hopefully, just smile. There she's smiling. Um, so that's my barometer. If Cheryl smiled, I'm good, Jeff. You know, that's it. Um, so we were going right along and, and uh, garbage day around here is Thursday. And uh, I have to tell it because it just punctuates the great week I had. Some of you heard this. So uh, I had come, to, went to town, and I was banking on the fact that President's Day would make them a little bit late. And I was right. Mark that down, but I was right. So I got in the van, and I thought, okay, I got the trash can. I had a couple extra outside the trash can. He was coming down the road. I had just come home, and it was later in the afternoon. But I could see him at the end of the road. It's like chasing the ice cream truck when you get home, and the garbage man has not come to your house yet. And, and you know what I'm talking about, right? So I got home and I backed our, our minivan into the garage and opened the hatch up. And I thought, I'm just going to take the garbage can, slide it in there because I'm big and buff and strong, and stick it in the back. The back wheels were kind of sticking out of the back a little bit. I put the extra ones in there and I get in the front and I'm like, yep, I'm going to beat him. I'm going to get the trash there on time. And I got in the front and I went to go forward and I forgot that I did not put the hatch all the way down. That... Yeah, you are. Oh. <laughs> I had brought it down and clicked it just to where it would maybe touch the trash can and be good enough. But when I went over, something jarred it. You know, I don't know if Mike left a snow hump there in front of the garage just to make me irritated. But it bumped it enough to where the, the, the hatch went down, hit the can, went up and hit the garage door. And I don't have to tell you the rest. But I just heard the noise at first, and I got out of the front, and I'm like, oh, I didn't close the thing. I looked, and then there was glass laying around. Yeah. Do you know what my first thought was? Anybody want to take a guess? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I had church, Jim. Yes, I did. I got out an offering plate and a song book and went to town. You know, you're thinking, this is going to make insurance go up higher. What a mess. I had two big thoughts was, I still got to get this trash to the side. Before this guy shows up. And then I kept thinking, how do I tell my wife? You know, how do I do it? So you know how I did it? I didn't. I did the trash thing, cleaned up part of the glass, whatever, pulled the van in, shut the door, went in the house, and I prayed like David, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and the bed to go, all of them together. And they got home from school. It's about the longest hour of my life. And they pulled in, and I said, when I heard the car pull in, I kept thinking I would hear, oh, or hear some noise. Nobody. If I wanted them to not see it, they would have. I wanted them to see it first and then come in and make sure Dad was okay. Dad, you all right? Is anything wrong? You know? But I, I, I heard nothing, and I walked out, and I finally had to say, look. They're in the garage, and I sure looked at it, and she goes, Really? <laughs> That was it. She goes, really? And they all went back in the house. And I'm looking going, but I'm okay. I'm good. All the fingers are here, the ears. I'm good. I'm good. You never know what's in here till something from the outside comes at you. And that's a small little thing. It gets fixed tomorrow. God is good, right? It's a window. It's a window. <laughs> 
you, if that would have been me, that's different. I, you can't replace that. It's a window, okay? So when we find out that things go on around us, sometimes poise is a big word. Poise is something that, that we think more about being in a, in a conjecture of posture, right? As I speak, you're already straightening your back up a little bit more, trying to be... I was thinking about walking around, Jim, trying to preach with a songbook on my head, see if it would stay up there the whole time. You want to stay straight. You want to have good posture. Your poise determines a lot of things and how you carry yourself so you have good health and, and good physical health. And yet, there's two different definitions of poise uh, in, in it being a noun is graceful and elegant bearing in a person. There's grace, elegance, balance control grace and elegance that comes out in a person being graceful being elegant so jesus does something here in chapter four of um, luke to show us how to still stay graceful and balanced and elegant even when it's not such a good day bigger than what i even had going on with me in verse 28 he, they, he had just finished speaking to the people and as usual they didn't like what he had to say and so they were a little bit riled and ruffled And when they heard what he had to say, all in the synagogue, now get this, you know the synagogue was their church. So Jesus had just got up in front of them and told them the truth. And this is Jesus. So he did it right. He said it correctly. They were filled with wrath. Wrath is not just, I'm irritated. Wrath is, I'm pretty well just ticked off and ready to come at you insensibly. I just made that word up, but it sounds pretty mean, doesn't it? They're mad with wrath. They were filled with wrath. And not only are they mad, but they rose up and drove him out of town in verse 29 and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so they could throw him down the cliff. This is Jesus, remember. And I'm having a bad day. And I remember that they took the Son of God who never sinned a day in his life out to the side of a cliff to push him off. I realize even that is worse let alone Calvary, than I'll ever deal with. Unless you get the bright idea some Sunday to get mad in the church and take me to the brow of the hill and push me off the cliff. <laughs> Lynn, you're looking at me serious back there. Watch that. But what did he do? Verse 30, I love it. I love because I wish there were days, Tyler, I could just disappear like this. But passing through their midst, he went away. That's the end of it, Toby. Toby. Passing through their midst, he went away. Do you know what he could have done? So many times I think I'm very guilty of glossing over what Jesus could have done throughout the stories in the Bible of what he dealt with. You're talking about a group of people who look at the Son of God who could, who has the power of heaven at his fingertips. And they're mad at him, Mike, because they didn't like what he said. They didn't like the fact that he told them they've got to live better lives. That they've got to accept God as, a, uh, as the supreme of all things. And that there's coming a, a way of grace. We don't have to go by the letter of the law anymore. And all the great stuff that he was saying, which was better than what they were living. It was a better deal than what they already had. They didn't like it. And he could have stood up. Gary, if that was you and me, I'd say, you take the left side, I'll take the right. And we're going to bomb them right now. Bunch of dirty, stinking, rotten dogs, right? That's Gary's favorite thing to say about us. He stood up, and they had him to a cliffside. And there he could have said, you know what I'll do, Lauren? I'll show him. I'll send you over the cliff. Right? You go ahead. But what did he do? He found a way to get past all the mob and all that. They were so mad, they lost him. They were so mad that they couldn't find him. Lost Jesus. There's a message in that. He got away from them and went on his way. And realized, they're not going to accept what I had to say. Do you see some character and some poise in that? He has more at his disposal than I ever will. And yet he handled it quietly. He went away. You ever thought about some of the things that happen in our lives that require us to stay calm? That require us to stay strong? That require us to stay faithful? That require us to to not retaliate? Can I tell you something? The easiest thing to do is retaliate. Has anybody ever retaliated before? Don't raise your hand. Especially if it was today. That's why we have prayer at the end of the message, okay? But we've retaliated before. It may be at home. It may be at work. It may be on the road with your horn. The car horn is one of the most greatest inventions that ever lived, right? Hey, where'd you get your license from? You know, Connor is learning and I'm trying to tell him every time something happens that may not be in our benefit on the road. He said this four times this week. Dad, honk your horn. I looked at him and go, no. 
Something else happened the other day. We were driving. He goes, and I was in my truck. Truck has no horn. Somebody got in front of me and cut me off. And we did. I don't know why this keeps happening. Every Sunday I tell you about somebody cutting me off on the road. Um, but they, something happened and, and we were on the road. And the car was like, Dad, honk. Oh, you can't, can you? Yeah. I said, no. I said, listen, Roadrunner, why are you wanting to honk the horn so much? He said, that's what it's for. You got to let people know. I go, listen, when you start driving, you keep doing that, you won't be driving long. And you won't have very many friends. The horn, if you look up your driver's manual, that is to allow a person in the left-hand lane to get in front of you after they have passed at a safe distance on the interstate and let them know, it's okay to get in front of me now. Look it up. I'm not lying. Try that one. Yeah, somebody's passing you. You honk at them? I don't know if that's a good idea or not. We have to stay under control. And it's not easy. Especially when you look at what Jesus did. And, and there's so many times when I read that and I talk to you about it. And many of you are probably thinking, Heather, yeah, but that was Jesus. And he's full of the Holy Spirit. And he's God's son. And the more I start to define what he's full of, I think I have the same thing. If I'm a child of God. Hello. But I'm not Jesus. But I'm trying to be Christ-like, Clarinda, And I'm trying to show him to other people. And I remember that no matter what happens to me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's my favorite verse. They're all good, but I love that one. You know why? I have to be reminded, Smiley, that I need to let that greater in me come out sometimes. Don't you? And there are times when it doesn't come out. And there are times that it does. I don't keep track because I don't want to have a percentage of when it does and when it doesn't, Pat. But I want to tell you, when it does come out and it is godly, it feels pretty good. I said retaliating is the easiest thing to do. And I've thought this week, you know, we've got to remember that sometimes not getting baited into something Satan wants us to do feels pretty good. It's okay to walk away and be silent. Sometimes being silent, Linda, is, I don't mean this because I looked at you and said this and now I'm going to have to finish it. Sometimes staying silent is stronger and harder than it is saying what we think. I did not direct that at you. (laughs) But it came out. (laughs) I don't know what God's wanting to do with that. I'm just kidding. No. It says here, he's on the side. They were plotting how to throw him down the cliff. And he found a way to get away. Stop and think about that in your life. The first aspect of poise is balance, strength, control, staying focused no matter what happens. I'm going to show you a video of something. And it really, it really got to me this week. There was a a coach in the NBA, his name is Monty Williams, used to coach New Orleans when they were the Hornets, and he he got fired from that job. And he, I have to admit, I I follow a lot of sports and stuff, but I'd seen his name before, never had a clue, his life, his beliefs, his faith or anything like that. Just this past week, his wife was killed in a car accident, and a lady had come across the line and hit her head on, and they both died. The lady died, and and, uh, his wife died as well. They have five kids. Rage again, a lot of different ages, and he's, a, he's an assistant coach now in Oklahoma City and, and busy and doing all the stuff that he does. And uh, they had her service this week. I was watching halftime of a game, and they put this up, and I, and I told Cheryl, I said, you've got to watch this because this is a man showing great, um, great forgiveness, great poise, and he's speaking at his wife's funeral here. Heather, go ahead and watch this and, and listen to what he has to say. My family, but this will work out. And my wife would punch me if I were to sit up here and whine about what's going on. That doesn't take away the pain. But it will work out because God causes all things to work out. You just can't quit. You can't give in. See, the Bible says Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And America teaches us to just numb that, and it's not true, but it is true. All you got to do is look around you. Get outside of these walls, and you know it's true. This will work out. Doesn't mean it's not hard. Doesn't mean it's not painful. Doesn't mean we don't have tough times, and we're going to have tough times. What we need is the Lord. And that's what my wife tried to exhibit every single day. I'm going to close with this, and I think it's the most important thing that we need to understand. Everybody's praying for me and my family. 
which is right. But let us not forget that there were two people in this situation. And that family needs prayer as well. And we have no ill will towards that family. In my house, we have a sign that says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We cannot serve the Lord if we don't have a heart of forgiveness. That family didn't wake up wanting to hurt my wife. Life is hard. It is very hard. And that was tough. But we hold no ill will towards the Donaldson family. And we, as a group, brothers united in unity, should be praying for that family because they grieve as well. So let's not lose sight of what's important. God will work this out. My wife is in heaven. God loves us. God is love. And when we walk away from this place today, let's celebrate. Because my wife is where we all need to be. And I'm envious of that. But I got five crumb snatchers I got to deal with. <laughs> I, I love you guys for taking time out of your day to celebrate my wife. We didn't lose her. When you lose something, you can't find it. I know exactly where my wife is. Mm -hmm. I'll miss holding her hand. I'll miss talking with my wife. Um, Sam and Coach Donovan probably couldn't figure out why I always wanted to get out of the office, uh, me and Mo Cheeks. Um, Mo probably wanted to go do something else. But we always wanted to get out of the office. I just enjoy being with my wife. I enjoy being with my family. And most of the times we didn't do anything. We'd just be at the house sitting around um, doing nothing. I'm going to miss that. Let's not lose sight of what's important. God is important. What Christ did on the cross is important. Let's not lose sight of that family that also lost someone that they love. I love you guys. I hope I get a chance to hug and shake a hand and give a kiss on the cheek. But let's keep what's important at the forefront. Thank you. And I have a new hero in my life today, and, and that's him. How can you stand in front of people after that happens and say that, and I believe he meant it because he sounded like he was speaking straight from his heart. That's a man that has the Holy Spirit guiding his every thought. Because our first reaction is, we're going to go get them. And our first reaction would be to go get all the money from these people you can and sue them because of that. That's not going to bring your family member back. That may not be a popular thing to say, but that doesn't help. Money doesn't replace a lost family member. Money doesn't show anything. It's the fact that we just know what, she, what he said. She's in heaven. She's where I want to be, and I want to get there. Amen? Now, can I, I haven't dealt with that. A lot of you have. And you know what I've seen out of you? Nothing but God. Nothing but the Holy Spirit's power and strength. What keeps a person from wanting to lash out at another person? You know God's in control. If you've never thought there's peace in that, Dan, we, we learn every day that there is. It doesn't matter what's done to me. It doesn't matter what someone does to me. I'm, if I'm a target, I'm a target. Big deal. I matter how I reflect God in my life. That poise. Amen? Because all it's going to take is somebody to see me not acting like a Christian should. Oh, I knew it. He's a fake. All those preachers are fake. Money grubbers. Run around. That's all they care about is himself. Look at him. He's not full of anything more than the drunk down the road. I don't want that to happen. He's just a, I'm a regular guy, full of flaws. I break van windows for a living. That's what I do. Too lazy to carry that. It's the first girl's like, just take it and roll it out to the road. Well, there's snow up to here in the yard. Not now. God bring a warm front. Here's what we have. How do you respond? So the other part of poise in the, in, the, in the noun section we learn now as a verb, it's standing ready to react. So now as I see from, the, from one side of the word, it says it's, it's your balance, it's your character, it's your grace, it's how, you, it's how you react. But the other part of that says being ready. So if you put that together and make it a God thing, Brittany, we can say it's standing ready to react in a godly way. Amen? Standing ready to react. Don't ever get up in the morning and say, nothing will happen to me today because I'm awesome. Now try that and see. Look in the mirror and let it happen. I tell myself that every morning, look in the rearview mirror. Now look, little guy, buck up. 
You're all right. People love you. You'll be fine. You know, it's hard to do that and keep you on the road, but I try. But you got to remember, it's not what happens to me. It's my response. And that's that's 90, 10, you know, all that Tony Robbins stuff. I don't even know if Tony Robbins has still got a job anymore or not, giving self-help stuff. Mike, if we're offering any help outside of Christ, it's not going to last, right? But I'm saying this. There are going to come plenty of testing and trial times. Ted, in your job, the glorious job of getting stuff to people on time, have you ever run across anybody that's upset about something? Look at him, look away. Yeah, right? But you know how he handles it? How he probably handles everything else. Stoically, right? You run him over with your UPS truck. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) You handle it right. I don't know what happened that day. Lord, maybe that person that day got bad news, right? Maybe the person that day uh, found out something that was bad. Maybe, who knows? I have to try to understand people where they are. And understand what they're dealing with. And if I'm a target that day, Gary, then I'm a target. But they're never going to remember what they said. They're going to remember how I reacted. Other people are going to watch and see what I do. Oh, I don't like that kind of stress. It's not stress. You know why it's not stress? Because I want to live as close to this word and as close to God as I can. So my reactions are like blinking and breathing. They're godly. Not perfect. There are times when you see me doing a hat dance every once in a while about something. But I have to get forgiveness for that. We're all, none of us are, are, are perfect, right? But we're staying ready to react. John tells us this last two verses, 32 and 33 of John 16. He's talking to the disciples. He's been talking to them in parables. He's been talking to them in, in different ways. And they're looking at him thinking, when is he ever going to talk plain to us? You know, are you, going to, are you going to describe things in a way we can understand it? And he says, okay, he said, do you believe now? The hour is coming and it has come when you'll be scattered, each to his own home, and you'll leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. Up until that point in time, they were right behind him. They got to follow him everywhere he went. What a joy that would be. To be right behind the vapor trail and the jet stream of Jesus every day. And watch how he talked. And watch how he reacted. And and see the words uh, and hear that he said. And see the actions he did. What a front row seat that would be. Amen? I'd sign up for that in a heartbeat. And they remind him, Lynn... He said, there's going to come a moment when you're scattered and your visual aid's not going to be here anymore. He didn't exactly talk about the Holy Spirit yet to them, but that's what he's saying. There's going to come a time when he's going to come down, he's going to be right in here. But you're not going to see it, and now we're introducing faith. So you're going to have to remind yourself of this. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have what? Peace. Like a river. In the world you'll have And you can put anything under that umbrella of tribulation you want. But take heart. Here's what I send you out with this morning. I have overcome the world. Anybody want to celebrate that? Okay, I just made a three-pointer to win the game. How would you act? (laughs) Woo! I just blocked for Kale and Kale ran two big 400-pounders over and scored a touchdown and we win. We win free pizza for life. Anybody want to join us in that? Right? Softball game. We're up against the the other church that beats us all the time. Which one is that? And uh, (laughs) bases are loaded. They throw one at me. And I hit a home run and we win. And you guys got to help me with oxygen. Get all the way around the base pad to get the home plate. And I cross home and we win. How do you react? It's about time he did something. Now let's talk about reality. I get up and I hit a little dribbler back to the pitcher and he runs at the home plate and steps on it and we lose. How do you react? Yeah, the woos are getting a lot smaller. I don't have to tell you how to act when good things happen, do I? It's automatic. Yeah, you stink and we don't. Yes. But when the hard times begin to squeeze us, every once in a while, it's not so pretty. Amen? And there are people watching, whether you like it or not. If I can stand as strong as Monty Williams just did in a moment like that, that I hope never comes to any of you, let alone myself. That's what I want. That, that proves to me that God is real. That proves to me that the Holy Spirit does a work that's different from the world. I'm not out for my own revenge. I'm out to spread God's peace. He says, I've told you before, and I remind you again, you're going to have tribulation in the world. But take heart, I've overcome the world. 
Amen? Just hit the three. Just crossed home plate. Just boiled across the goal line. We win. I've already told you the outcome already. We win. It's going to be a battle or two every once in a while. We're going to suffer some loss, and there's going to be a few hits and scrapes and bruises, but in the end, we win. And we got the scars to prove it. When Connor was little, he decided he was going to take the couch on. What was he, maybe two years old? He was running. He was always running. Little little box car of a kid, you know, always falling down. Kids always were their parents to death with, with falling down and falling out of trees and doing everything in the world. He landed on our chase with this side of his head on the end of it, and he started bleeding like crazy. Was it there? That's what I said. It's right there. <laughs> I was so nervous, I didn't know what part of his head it was. It was his head. So he had to go and he had to get stitches in that. Another time, he's had a birthday party. A birthday party. Should be a nice sanitary cake and ice cream. God is good kind of a moment. They're upstairs, and boys playing as boys do. They find the roughest way to play. Kid threw something at him. He, he went to dodge it, went up against the wall, and this big shark, I don't know what it was, The the big thing that they give women when they win Wimbledon, I think. It came off the wall, hit it. This is where he got hit in the head. It came down and sliced him in the head. And they're yelling upstairs, Mr. and Mrs. Farmer. And I ran upstairs and we're like, what? And out he comes, pale as a ghost, blood. I'm not kidding. It was all over like this. I thought his juggler had been hit because there was so much blood this way. He's just looking at us and he's not talking. That alone was a scary enough sign. We're standing there looking and Cheryl's like... Like I'm looking over here like what? And we start trying to wash him off. And he's just like, go, are you all right? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> what kind of response is that? We clean him all up. Take him to the, the ER. He had, what, four staples. And I, I don't even know if they numb the child. They get the staple going out. They go, now, he's like, he's like eight years old. They go, now, we're going to staple your head. He goes, okay. <laughs> so they get this. They roll it in. You know, and they're, all right, back it up. And it's beeping. And out comes this stapler. I'm here. And they stapled this kid's head. Bam, bam, bam. And I'm like, whoo. Every time it clicked, I made a different face. That's my baby. They're stapling his head shut. And he's like, that's cool. <laughs> I don't understand it. Every time he goes to Lynn and gets his hair cut. Every time she makes a swipe across that side of his head, there's that scar. I remember every element of that day and that night. I remember every time when he gets his hair cut and he looks. And he knows I look at that. And I start to tear up because we get in the car again. He goes, you're looking at my head again, aren't you? I said, yes. Because I remember how scared I was seeing my son walk out of the room with blood everywhere, looking at me, not talking, pale. Parents do that, right? Don't tell me your kids never hit their head and bled on anything. Our scars remind us of how we reacted. My son... You might as well have told him that tomorrow was Tuesday. It didn't matter to him. A lot of other people would have been, I I probably bent my nail backwards a couple of times and went around the house screaming and crying, acting like, this is it. I'm coming, Elizabeth. You know? (laughs) He was tough. We had the scars to show our pain. But the record is showing how we react to that. I've overcome the world. Amen? It'll work out. He said it. God will work this out. Whatever's going on in your life right now, I don't have a clue what it is, but I can promise you, God has it worked out, Pat, already. Amen? Because He has overcome the world. We don't expect any better from the world, but we expect it from Him. He's already delivered. I don't want to see any any pouting. I don't want to see any lower lipping. I don't want to see anybody doubting God, because we don't do that around here. Amen? Remember the excuse limit zero sign we had up a couple years ago? I understand there's trouble in life. And I don't mean to sound mean. I'm talking to myself. There are days when I start trying, Jeff, to tell God all what's wrong and what's wrong and what I don't have. And he's like, okay, so what do you need? You ever try to sit down and really tell God what you need? And you start telling, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get that way. I've got what I need. I have him. We come with a song. And we stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed for just a minute. Searching our hearts today. <clears throat> With our heads bowed, I, I'm going to ask you today to, to just search your heart. And maybe there's something that's kind of just really been digging at you. Maybe you've got a situation, maybe even similar to what we've talked about, or maybe it's unique. But you just want to make sure that you keep your poise throughout the whole matter. 
and show God through it. And you just want to raise your hand and say, pray for me. Just lift your hand up, put it right back down, and I'll pray for you. God bless you. Help me keep my poise because it's really getting irritating, and I want to show God in it. And I want to stay strong. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Many hands going up. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Father, we love the life you give us. There are so many blessings. And there are times that we still have to walk through the minefields and still stay strong and show you in what we do. And I pray today, no matter how big or how small, that we celebrate the fact that you have overcome the world. And keeping our balance and staying graceful and being ready for what is thrown at us is all the importance of being a Christian today. I ask you right now for every hand that's gone up that you would give them that ability and help them to shine in whatever their situations today. And there's some of us that maybe don't know what's even coming down the road. Help us to stay just as balanced and graceful and ready in those situations as well. Help us come and pray today. If that Holy Spirit is starting to pull on our hearts and give us the tug to come to the altar, this is where we'll find the the beginning and the makings and the ability to do so. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.